All right, determining the shielding effectiveness is pretty easy. What you're going to do is start with all of the buttons of the attenuator fully pressed. All right, now sometimes they're a little bit sticky when you first get them, so you have to press them kind of hard. But make sure all the buttons are fully pressed. Now, if you have a Faraday cage or an EMP bag, and let's say you want to determine if it has 40 dB of shielding or more, all you do is you take out 40 dB off the attenuator. All right, so I took off 220s here. Then you button it all up nice and tight. You put it inside the bag. You go to 24 inches with your transmit radio, and you turn on the transmit radio. Do the push to talk button. If the radio inside the bag turns on, and you'll hear it, it'll be nice and loud. If it turns on, then you don't have 40 dB of shielding, okay? If it doesn't turn on, then you have at least 40 dB. You may have 100 dB, but you have at least 40. All right, so if it doesn't turn on, you have at least 40. You could take this back out of the bag, and maybe you want to test it again to see if you have 50. So maybe you would take an 8 and a 2 out. Now I've got 40 plus 8 and a 2 is 50. Put it back together, put it inside the bag, zip it all up, and try it again. If it doesn't turn on the radio, it means you have at least 50 dB of shielding of the product. If it does turn on, then you know you don't quite have 50. You're somewhere between 40 and 50 in that case. All right, so whatever you're trying to test to, whatever you want to verify that your bag has or your Faraday cage has, that's the amount that you remove off the attenuator before you run the test. And then if you want to repeat the process to see if it has more shielding, you can certainly remove more attenuation from the attenuator and repeat the experiment to see if you're able to turn on the radio. Now, eventually, you'll, you'll remove enough attenuation. Maybe you, you, know, you remove you know, 76 dB of attenuation. Eventually, the radio will turn on, and you'll know that the bag does not have 76 dB of attenuation. It has something less than that. All right? So you can continue to back off until you figure out approximately what value of shielding that product has. Now, it's real important to not get hung up on whether you're plus or minus a couple of dB. All right? You don't have to get down to that um, f you know, finite value of 1 or 2 dB. And in fact, it's very difficult to do that because there's so many things that are not exactly repeatable. The way you seal the bag, the orientation of the antenna when you set this device inside the bag. So what I always tell people is try and get down to within about 5 dB. That will tell you if the bag or the Faraday cage has good shielding or if maybe you need to put a little bit more work at getting some, you know, sealing up the seams or getting some uh, different materials or something that would provide better shielding. All right, so don't get hung up on trying to narrow in on exactly the dB. Just try and get in on the approximate value. All right, so in our particular case, we know that the EMP bag has 65 dB of shielding. I verified that with my spectrum analyzer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off 65 dB. So what I'll do is I'll remove 60. I'll remove a 4 and a 1. Now I've got 65 dB removed. I'll button up the box. I'll stick it inside of our EMP bag, tighten up the bag, and see if I can turn on the radio. Now, I shouldn't be able to turn on the radio, but it should be pretty close. My guess is that if I move the radio closer and closer to the bag, it will turn on because it's pretty close to 65 dB of shielding. And if I move closer, I'm putting a stronger signal toward it and eventually it will manage to turn on the radio. All right, but we'll go ahead and try it with 65 and we'll see if I can turn on the radio at that test distance of 24 inches. All right, let me mention one more thing before I forget. Be absolutely certain that the radio is set to the right channel, that both radios match on their channel. I usually use channel one just because that's easy to remember. And make sure that this radio is turned on and that the volume is up all the way. Okay, you want this radio inside the box to be really loud so that you can hear it even when it's inside the Faraday cage. Okay, if you forget to do that, you'll be sorry because you'll have to take the whole thing back apart and come in here and turn that on and make sure your channel is set right. All right. So before you button it up, make sure the radio is on and that it's set to the right channel and that the volume is turned all the way up. Okay, so the final step is to see if our Faraday cage tester works properly. Now we know that the bag has 65 dB of shielding because I verified that with a very expensive piece of test equipment. So what I did is I took the attenuator, it starts off with 90 dB of attenuation and I removed 65 from it. Okay, so it only has 25 left in the attenuator. I put that inside of the bag. So now there's not much signal being attenuated, only 25 dB in the attenuator. The bag has to make up the rest, the rest of the 90, okay? So the bag has to provide 65, and then the attenuator will provide the other 25, all right? So if it provides 65, when I push the radio, it won't turn on the, the radio inside, all right? If it doesn't provide that much, then the radio would turn on, or if I have some mistake, the radio would turn on. So I'll go ahead and try it, and the radio does not turn on at this distance of 24 inches. All right. Now that means that indeed it has 65 dB or more of shielding. Okay. If I move closer to it and I can turn it on as I get closer, 
it means 65 is pretty close to the right number. All right, let's see if we can turn it on. Yeah, we can turn it on. When we get to about a foot or maybe eight, 16, 18 inches, we're able to turn it on. And that means we're pretty close to being able to turn it on at 24 inches, our test range. So 65 dB is actually, of course, the right number. And our Faraday cage tester confirms, yes, yeah, 65 dB, you can't turn it on. So that was the right value. But if you get much closer, you can get it to turn on, all right? And so what I've done is I've tried to prove that the Faraday cage tester, the low cost system, provides a, a value that is very similar to a high uh, expensive piece of test equipment, all right? That expensive piece of test equipment told me definitively it's 65 dB of shielding. This system said, well, we guessed 65 and we just verified that 65 was correct, all right? And so again, inside of the unit here, you just open it up. All we have is our inexpensive Faraday cage tester. So again, the whole point of the experiment was just to show that the results we get from this low cost Faraday cage tester are in line with something you would get from a much more expensive piece of equipment, all right? And essentially what I did is I used the expensive piece of equipment to, to calibrate and verify my setup, the way the antennas are done and all of the different things in this system to make sure that the box was properly sealed and that that would work well. And so I verified it with much more expensive equipment that this system does in fact give reasonable answers. Right. So anyway, I hope I've made it clear what the testing process is and why I believe the results of the Faraday cage tester. All right, three areas to pay attention to when you're making these measurements. The first is make sure that you're operating at 24 inches. That's what I've calibrated everything for. So 24 inches, give or take an inch or two is fine, but don't be out at five feet and don't be here at six inches. You'll get results that, don't, that aren't correct, all right? The second one is make sure your workspace here where you're actually making the measurement is open and clear. You don't wanna have a bunch of objects that the RF energy can bounce off of. That can actually affect your results quite a bit. And finally, you want to make sure the box is fully sealed and tight, all right? So make sure you put in all six screws nice and snug. If you don't do that, the energy will actually squeeze in through the gasket and it'll make it into the box and it won't come down through the antenna at all. It'll just go dire directly in and get right into the radio. And what we want is we want all of our energy to go through the antenna, down through the attenuator and up into the radio, okay? So those are the three things to really pay attention to. So first, 24 inches, that's the distance you're going to test at. Make sure your space is open and finally make sure your box is well sealed. Now I will say working with RF energy can be a bit frustrating sometimes, but I did spend quite a bit of time verifying that the process works and that the results indeed match something from a much more expensive piece of equipment. And I'm confident that if you follow the process carefully, you can get meaningful results as well. All right. The whole goal of the thing again is to get an estimate of the shielding effectiveness of something that you're trying to protect your electronics in. All right? You don't have to be accurate to be within one or two dB. That it really isn't that important. But you'd like to know, does it provide 50 dB of shielding? Or did I do something wrong and I'm really only getting 10 dB of shielding? That makes a big difference, all right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do a, a, a real um, quantitative measurement that gives me an indication of how good my shielding is, all right? There's no point in building a big Faraday cage if you really have no way of testing it and you have no confidence in what you put inside it is going to be protected. All right? And that was the whole point of developing this product, is to give people a real quantitative way of making uh, that determination of what shielding their Faraday cage provides.